now going to show you how I'm going to take these photos that I've imported from Lightroom and bring them into my Photoshop template. So the first thing I want you to be aware of is I want you to think about color profiles. I'm doing this from experience because I didn't realize that when I first started doing this I was importing my photos and um, the color profiles were not matching and I didn't realize um, that when that happens you'll end up with very dull looking photos. So what you should do is just go and check and see what your color profile is for your photos. Um, so I can see here that um, I, I go into uh, assign profile and actually it just jumps right, for me it's just jumping right to don't color manage this but what the profile Photo RGB, that's the one I'm working in. You may be working in a different color profile. Some people work in sRGB, other people work in Adobe RGB. Um, right now I'm working in Pro Photo. So I know that that is where all of these pictures are at. And I'm going to look to make sure that my um, that my template is working in the same profile. So when I now bring over the pictures, you will not have um, any issues. So the first thing I want to show you is that right now I'm only, as an example, just going to show you three photos. However, normally what I would have is all nine photos that I would want to bring into my template over here already stacked up. But for the sake of this demonstration, we're just going to use three. You can see by turning, by highlighting the layer, the top layer, that's what this picture is. If I shut it off, you can see the one underneath it. And if I shut it off, you can see the bottom layer. If I shut it off, then I have no photos whatsoever. So what I like to do is I like to only keep visible the photo I'm working with. I'm going to just turn off the other two photos for right now. What I want to do is I want to right now take this photo and crop it base into the basic size that I'm going to want to bring it over into the template. So what I will do is I'll go over to the left side. Um, for this particular photo, because I don't have anything outside the edges, I'm just going to use my marquee tool, my rectangular marquee tool, which I can go over to the left side of my panel and select it, or I could just click the letter M and my marquee tool will pop up. I'm just going to grab take my marquee tool, start at the very edge of the box. Sometimes I don't even like where I started from and I'll restart it and I'll bring it down. So I have all the little marching ants and I can, you can see the box is really not a hundred percent level um, in the photo, but that's okay. We'll work around that later on. I let go. I have my marching ants. So now what I want to do is I'm going to press my keyboard and what that did was that took this picture and all the things I selected and created its own layer. So I'm going to shut off the this layer right here and you can see that now this picture is its in its own layer and that's what I want. So I'm going to go back to the original picture that I was working on and I'm going to throw it out because now that I've made my selection and cropped it I don't want it anymore. I'm going to throw it out. I'm going to shut off the cropped layer and I'm going to open up the next one. So this one's a little more intricate because I have some garland and I have her foot that I'm going to want to use in my composites. So instead of using my marquee tool, this time I'm going to use um, the quick selection tool. You can go to the left side and highlight it or you can just press the W. I'm going to use my quick selection tool to highlight all the things that I want quickly to be brought into my picture. Um, and you can just keep working it. If you overshoot it a little bit, you can always, right now you can see my quick selection tool has a plus sign. That means it's adding. Okay. So I'm also going to want to add in her foot because that is an intricate piece of the, of the photo that I'm going to want to keep. Oops. 
and I forgot I have to hold my shift button down at the same time so that way it'll keep adding it in for me. Oh, and it's not adding it. I don't know why. And it should be adding it. It doesn't want it. It's adding it. No, it's not adding it. Oh boy, I don't know what's going on here. All right, I'm gonna try to add a little more of the garland to it. I didn't need my shift button. And I'm not sure. Silly mistake, this is not really a silly mistake, but this is actually a really good teaching moment. What I forgot to do was, if you look at the right side of my panel, what's highlighted here and what I'm really working on is layer one, the one that I closed off, the one that's already been cut. So there's nothing else for it to cut. I needed to go to layer, the second layer, the one I'm really working on, for it to have something to cut out. So now that I've done that, um, I am going to add in her shoe and some more of the garland. Okay, so I overshot it a little bit. I'm going to press the option button on my, so I could bring some of these marching ends back in and sort of make it a little bit closer to the selection that I want it to be. At. And that way I have a pretty good selection before I actually drag it into the Photoshop template. I kind of want it to be as close as I can get it. And then once it goes into the Photoshop template, I can refine it even further, and I will. So this is the process of how I copy and cut. Um, I'm going to leave his hands uh, like this. I may go back in afterwards and refine it a little bit more but I want to make sure that when I cut, I have all the pieces that I need. Um, and, you know, refine this out a little bit. It's okay to overshoot it a little bit and then paint it back in later. Get her, whoops, get her shoe a little bit more refined. There are also other ways to refine a little bit more especially for things like garland, which is like hair. It's a little bit harder. Um, okay, so now that I have it pretty good where I want it to be, I'm going to again press Command J. And I've now created that in its own layer. If I close the full layer, you'll see that it's there. I'm going to take the full layer that I was just working on and delete it. And now what I have left is I have the top layer and the one I just worked on. And now I'm going to open up the bottom layer and I'm just going to use my marquee tool because this one is another easy one that I'm really just doing a box. So I don't need much more than that. Again, not perfectly level, but that's okay. We'll fix that later on. And Command J. I'm going to go down to the layer I was just working off of and I'm going to delete it. So now I have all three layers. I'm just going to pop them into a group. I'm going to highlight, I'm going to turn on all my layers. I'm going to highlight them all. All my layers have been highlighted over here on the right side. Then I'm going to press the letter V or go up to the top here and go to my move tool. I take my mouse with my move tool highlighted or selected. I'm going to press the shift button. When I press the shift button, I can down on my mouse, take them, select it together, bring them up to the top, and now bring them, highlight over the layer that you, over the Photoshop grid, um, have open already, and then bring my thing, bring my mouse back down, let go, and I have now sufficiently imported in all three pictures, and you can see in the layers panel, that they're all there. Okay, here they are on the right side. I'm going to, for now, take out my happy holidays. So I'm going to start with the top layer. I still have my move tool selected. I have, oh, actually, 
what I first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the layers that I just imported in on the right hand side I'm going to press shift I'm going to go from layer five down to layer three highlight all three layers so that they're all selected together then I'm going to press the t button T okay T is for transform I want not T um, V sorry V I want to have no not V <laughs> okay I'm having a moment what I want to do is I want to transform push the transform tool and where's my transform tool I have my move tool I want to transform them all at the same time actually if I go up here show transform controls so I've highlighted all three of my layers again and now I have my transform tools I want to push shift and I'm going to take one of the edges and I'm going to bring them down all three at the same time to approximately the size of the box that I'm going to want to be working with it doesn't have to be exact because afterwards you're going to move them around and size them a little bit more but now I know I have them about the right size transform tool and let go and I'm just going to go back to the right side and I'm gonna oh actually at first I have to click the check mark so that the transformation takes place I'm going to just go back and select one of my photos so what I want to do is I want to now move them around and say like okay where do I want them to go um, select another one show my maybe I'll want to put it over here maybe I'll want uh, layer three to be over here and I can kind of give myself a basic idea of where I want my layers to be um, here again if you remember I have some some grids for you some uh, folders for you for the photos so if I decide that I would like uh, this photo to be at the bottom what I would probably do is I'll take layer 5 I'll move it into the bottom row folder I'm going to take uh, layer 3 and put it in my top row folder and I'll take layer 4 which is in the middle and move it into my middle row image now another thing that you might want to do is layer three give it a name I would I would name all these layers because once you start working especially when you're working with a lot of layers it's just easier when you have your layers named to so go back to them so layer three I'm just gonna call it Meg that's my daughter looking up okay easy enough for layer four I'm gonna rename it all I'm doing is clicking on it to rename it um, double clicking on it and I'm gonna say kids in the center and then for layer five, I'm going to say Jared, that's my son, Jared, pushing up. That way I'll remember a little bit better. Um, so now the next thing you want to do, and which already is the grid lines. Now you've also sufficiently moved all your layers under the grid lines. When you first brought them in, they were above the grid lines. Now they're under them. So you can see you could turn your grid lines off. You could turn them back on. Uh, let's work with the middle layer because that one would be the most intricate so um, what I would want to do with kids in the middle is go back to my whoops and I'm gonna bring this back now you have to forgive me this is not my usual computer that I work on so some of the tools are a little different alright so now I have my transformation tool is already set up because if you remember I'm in my move I have my move tool highlighted with the box that says transformation controls so I have my transform tool here um, what I'm going to want to do is now oh I can see that my box is a little bit um, distorted it's not really fully straight so I'm just going to take my transformation tool and I'm going to turn it a little bit so that it fits I'm going to click the shift button as I do this so that the box stays in the proper ratio and I'm just making it a little bit bigger and I'm going to um, keep moving it so that I 
till I think it's even and I'm going to bring the box out a little bit more and maybe move it over to the side over here. I kind of want it so that none of my edges are showing. That's how I like it. Okay, and you can see now her foot is starting to come through. That's perfectly fine. I want that. That is the cool part of the whole thing. So, um, also my garland is showing. Of course, my garland came all the way through. So, I think this is how I will keep it for now. I may go back later on and change it. But now I have to make it so that you don't see the edges of the garland off on the sides, but you do see the over the grid lines. So the first thing I'm going to do is with this with this layer kids in the corner, I'm going to give it a mask, a white mask. So remember, whenever you have white, 